go. Yeah. Four, yeah. three, two. Okay, I'll call the Dixon County Commission meeting to order for February 20th, 2014. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item we have is the approval of the agenda, and um, the, it will be as presented. There's no additions. Okay, I move we approve the agenda. Second. We have the motion and second to approve the agenda as presented and printed. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item we have is that of the consent agenda, and that's the minutes from February 13th. That's our work section and our regular meeting. The abatements are $37,470.40. We also had wire payments of $3,654.84. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, we have the motion and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next one is that of commissioner comments and committee reports. And um, I'll go ahead and just mention that we do have the Abilene Area Chamber Banquet this evening. And I think, are all of us going to be in attendance or plan to attend? Oh, I'm not going. I didn't, plan not. Okay. I I, we made reservations, I forgot about it, and I made other plans. Okay. So we'll have two of us there at, at least, and then I, Janelle, are you going to that I, also? Yeah. Okay, so the county will be well represented. Yeah. And that's at the Eisenhower mm -hmm. Courtyard? Uh, yeah. At the library or the? It's kind of that south, south building. South building. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's so yeah. library. Yeah. Yeah. library. From yeah. the parking lot, you'll have to walk a little yeah. bit east. Yeah. Um, and I might mention, uh, well, that's come up too. That uh, we did attend, just kind of a reminder, a few weeks ago down there at the Harrington uh, Chamber of Commerce, and they had their annual banquet. And the county is uh, has membership with both the Abilene Area Chamber as well as the Harrington Chamber of Commerce. That's all I have for right now. Uh, Laverne, do you have anything on? Uh, yes, on uh, a week ago, uh, Thursday night. Uh, was the uh, Shore Conservation Annual Meeting uh, in Stirl Hall, and I attended that. And it's always nice to see the schools participate with the kids' uh, drawings of of conservation pictures. And uh, like I say, it it, it gets the uh, young kids involved in the schools and in, in I guess uh, understanding conservation practices maybe by thinking about. Uh, that when they're doing their drawings. Also yesterday was, was my monthly meeting over at Junction City for the North Central Regional Juvenile Center and uh, we've already completed audit for last year and uh, with Saline County coming in uh, about seven months ago uh, it has helped our carryover uh, we are carrying over, I think, about 150,000 more than what we started the year with. So, at the end of the year, we were carrying over, like I say, uh, increased that 150,000. So, and that was just for, like I say, a seven or eight month period that Sling County was in. So, hopefully, that can continue in the future. Uh, maybe. Like I said, we won't be seeing the raises maybe that we've seen in the past as far as, but I don't know whether we'd be able to cut our budget, but, you know, but uh, but anyway, it, it sure looks more positive that, that maybe we can, when they did come in, of course, it, it did increase our cost, but also the revenue that they brought in was a little more than, than what uh, their extra cost was, so. We're, a little uncertain of the future of that because Slim <coughs> County now is also doing their study work on whether they build a jail or whether they build a jail with the juvenile center uh, also and 
that that's kind of all up in the air, I guess. So we will see in the future whether they stay with us or, or pull out. But hopefully we can keep them there. And I'm, like I say, uh, I think from their standpoint, the overall efficiency is much better being in with, with North Central than trying to do it by themselves. So that's about all I have. Okay, Craig. Uh, last Thursday evening, also uh, Soil Conservation Service banquet. Uh, good opportunity to see what's going on in the county, and I'm sure uh, enjoyed it. Uh, yesterday, I <coughs> Rock Springs to the Flint Hills Frontier. Uh, they've got we had there was probably oh 75 to 80 people there. Uh, Tim Clark and then Jeff uh, McAdam, uh, their master planner, or yeah, Jeff Adams. Uh, they've got some annual, some community meetings coming up and trying to determine what the uh, next phase of the Flint Hill Regional Council will be. Uh, they're going you know, to start losing their funding. I, they're to uh, Bill Clark and Jeff are going part time, and the other four people are you know, still be full time. But it's going to be challenging for them when you're talking about uh, 19 counties, so, you know, from Oklahoma clear up to the Nebraska border to to try to find stuff that's uh, in common, and they and uh, you know each one of these areas has different wants and needs and of what they can get out of it, and it's more of a <clears throat> it's not like the uh, North Central Regional Planning Commission. It's more of a usage of how you can preserve the Flint Hills. Uh, Collaborate with you know with the uh, universities, school systems, and stuff, putting all that stuff together. First one I've been to, uh, very good. I mean, it was a lot of ideas for to get around. Uh, enjoyed talking to a commissioner from Lyons County for set lunch with him. Stuff. And if anybody wants to go, here's some dates when they'll be coming around. There's some flyers there. That's all I have. Okay, uh, you might. You might mention our work session with uh, Sherry on oh, okay. the genealogy that's kind of in your field. Well, a little bit. And I, I do want to mention, too, I mean, it, it's very helpful. I mean, with the, um, as county commissioners, we kind of divide up some of the um, activities and places that we can go and, and visit and because uh, there are a lot of things going on in the county, and so I really appreciate um, you know the dedication of Laverne and Craig to to go to a lot of these meetings because there are a lot of things that take place, and I know our staff is a lot of those meetings or, or attend a lot of meetings too. So um, the the other thing that uh, Laverne was alluding to is during our work study session, we had Sherry Massey come in, and one of the projects that she is working on is she is gathering information and materials from cemeteries in Dickinson County. And it not only includes uh, some of the um, easily recognizable cemeteries, you might say, because they're city-type cemeteries or by a church or whatever, but there's also uh, numerous small cemeteries um, in the county or situations where people maybe have one or two burials um, adjacent, you know, a field close to their house or something like that. So there's a lot of record keeping. But she has gathered information and quite a few cemeteries have given her information um, where she is working on a project where this information will be online. And so you will be able to go and, you know, search out whether it's you know, she gave examples of Abilene Cemetery, <coughs> Perrydale Cemetery up by Talmadge, um, Fairview Cemetery. But I mean, there's there's um, what she say, fifty some cemeteries plus situations where there's just single burials or a few burials out in fields. So um, that information is going to be available. But also, if there's anyone uh, that is on a cemetery board or any community or township that there is a cemetery if they would get a hold of, of Sherry with the information and if they would want to be part of this project it will be ongoing. Um, it certainly will be a help for people doing genealogy type insurance uh, research and um, 
So anyway, that's that's what our briefing was. I, I don't, Brad, do you have anything to add to it, or I might have left a few things out? No, I, just that we we the clerk's office and the, the grades of the uh, register needs get daily inquiries from from people doing research by phone and, and walk-ins, and this will tremendously <laughs> open up that that data for the world. So it, it's a really neat project. So. One thing that's going to be helpful on, and I think all of the cemeteries and board people are accommodating. Sometimes people call and they want to do some research, and they they just make an inquiry, and they kind of have the timeline down to a year or two, and and the family name is known in that cemetery, and they'll make inquiry. But the other thing is sometimes um, they receive requests for people that have four or five pages of information where they aren't even sure that the person, the burial took place in Dickinson County, but they know that they lived here approximately in that time. And and it, it's, it's something where um, a lot of the cemetery caretakers and sextons and board members, they, they aren't researchers and they, it's not practical for them to do several hours or several days of, of research. So this, this particular part that, uh, that Sherry's doing will allow people to go in and they can start searching all the cemeteries within the county um, that have that information and, and perhaps that'll help them uh, in, in some of their search. Okay, are there any other uh, comments? The next item is that of, uh, we do not have any petitions or proclamations today. Are there any uh, comments uh, from anyone in the audience that they would want to make at this time? Otherwise, we'll go ahead to uh, our weekly report from our county administrator, Brad Hallman. Okay, I presented you a couple things. Uh, first, we have locked down the uh, date for township night to March 31st and uh, provide you a, a tentative draft of the way we tend to lay that out. We're going to do things a little different this year with some breakout sessions and, and uh, hopefully that will go over well. Uh, and we're in the process of getting the people scheduled for that. I think we've got most of them at this point. So I think today the notices are going in the mail to the township board members. So we've also scheduled uh, the 26th of March at 7.30 at Talmadge at the community center there for that uh, public meeting for the sewer district. And uh, those notices, I believe, went out yesterday. So. Monday we had good weather and we were able to get our core drilling done on Key Road and uh, it went as we anticipated it would. We had uh, four fires and a fifth that has since been tested. We also took samples off of, uh, one sample off of Union Road and one off of Ferrer Road. It was done before and after and both those uh, appeared to be just fine when they, when they were taken. So. Uh, we've got the results, the results of the, the ones that did hold together were done yesterday and we've obtained those and so we are done there. So uh, Tuesday we uh, needed done by the field, we got bids for that, we also got the bid of 297 and from what we were told, uh, and what we saw actually, the price of fuel was increasing at the time so we might have got in just before it increased. We did receive notice uh, Monday, I believe, is when the email came in again from U.S. Fish and Wildlife that uh, we have uh, tentatively been approved for additional fish passage funding uh, under their 2014 fiscal year program uh, in the amount of $50,000 for one that we had submitted on 1800 Avenue, which is actually over east of uh, Wolf Road on the south side of uh, Rock Springs Ranch. Uh, so that's good news. We've got two or three other locations we've also submitted, uh, but he won't be able to tell us anything about that this year until the federal funding is locked down. So but things certainly look good for additional funding there. And as I've said before, we'll take all of them in. So again, that is uh, fish passage money for because of the habitat area that Peak China. So. We are, I am working on a letter of intent to submit to uh, the state for, uh, to let them know that we would like or request to apply for 
uh, mitigation mm -hmm. funds from FEMA to help offset some of the costs. Basically, a grant uh, for the storm shower out at the straw hall. Uh, following the thought process that if we can get FEMA to pay for 75% of a project like that, it'd be a good plan. You know, it's a long shot uh, because that money is very highly sought after, but this is a project that falls directly in line with the intent of the funding, being in a public location and the type of clientele and, and public individuals it would serve. So we'll see what, you know, we're going to submit it and see what shakes out. What all you have to have, Brad, for that? Do you have to have drawings or anything? Uh, we don't have to, although we do have a conceptual drawing okay. that we've been able to get from from the architect we talked to. He threw something together. Uh, we're going to submit some photos. I've got some documentation and some data from the fair office as far as the groups that used to a hall and the, the fairgrounds out there that would be potentially use a shelter like that. So yeah. uh, we've compiled that information. I've just about got everything typed up, spent this week working on it. And, and it's due by March 1, so we'll get it submitted next week. The process is you submit a letter of intent that you'd like to apply for the grant. Mm -hmm. They read the State Department of Emergency Management reviews those letters and then determines who's eligible to submit the grant application. So if we make it through the first step, that's a good sign, and uh, then we'll make the actual formal application for the, for the funding. So, but that would be a 75% match? They fund 75%, yeah. yeah. So we, we'd have to come up with 25%. So. We are, uh, Martin has been doing some research, and you know, we've got a, a, a one of the mowing tractors that is in the budget to be replaced in the capital plan. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with those tractors. Uh, he's come up with uh, an idea that I actually really like of leasing uh, those mowing tractors. Uh, several of the vendors, uh, CTI and some others, have a lease program similar to what we use on the Bobcat that. Uh, you lease it for a year and you get a new tractor every year and for the prices that we're seeing come in so far we couldn't afford to even think about buying a tractor and the nice thing about the leasing is they do the maintenance there's no you know you've got a static amount that you plan on each year for the lease and you don't have to worry about if an engine blows or transmission goes out you don't have that big expense as you just saw come through last month on one of ours so we're probably be coming back to you with something like that. We think we can save quite a bit of money by doing that and uh, and have, a, have good solid tractors to use. So we'll hopefully have some more information here in the next couple weeks to bring back to you. I see you've got a S and Princess. We're looking, you know, I mean, you're looking at maybe two then or just one to see what well, it goes Well, it kind of depends. We've got, you know, <clears throat> we run two tractors. We right. actually got three. We run two and it takes two all the time to get around. Right. Uh, once we work the numbers out, put a pencil to it, it may be feasible to, to curb away both our tractors while they're still running. We get some money out of them and lease two tractors, and maybe maybe a savings in the, in the long run. So uh, we haven't got that far on it yet, but we do have a couple of bids in from the vendors, and and they're looking looking really good. So what size? I mean, we're looking 80, 90, 100 horsepower tractors, or what we've got are about 80, 80. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. They are undersized. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, yeah. Martin was telling me earlier that uh, CTI had submitted some information on what they would provide, and it would be a bigger tractor than it would actually take, but then it's something they can market after the first year right. and sell each year. Yeah, uh, so, a 100 horse tractor is more common right. than what people want. So that would be a benefit to us as well, <laughs> so, uh, but we'll, we'll get more information. Just approximately how many hours do you have? I mean, any idea of what we put on this one tractor a year, Brad? We put about four to 500 hours okay. a year. That's not, not high my hours. No, it's yeah. not. And yeah. that's desirable to them. Yeah. And they can give us a lower rate because the yeah. tractor's not going to be worn out when they get it back. So, uh, but it's seasonal. It, when right. you need them, you need them. And uh, so and we really don't use those tractors too awfully much the rest of the year. So. We're, we're looking at a considerable cost savings there, given the fact that we just spent a ton of money on one of those tractors. So uh, next week, Dust will be in with a, uh, a zoning application for a subdivision. Uh, I have given you the uh, packet. Each one of you has that that you can take home and review between now and then. Uh, and it's basically a, a division of, of property for 
a family that's inviting you. <coughs> Our items have been listed on Purple Wave. They're set for March 4th auction. I looked yesterday and, and the Explorer and, and uh, some of the stuff is already had a number of bids on it. So I got one call yesterday on the Explorer. So uh, they, should, they should be uh, <laughs> attractive. We'll see what happens. Brad, there were um, a couple of items that kind of in the discussion I recall that had just come up that Probably it wasn't practical to try to take them to Purple Wave, but were, were we going to get a hold of department heads? Or have we received any feedback if there are some items that will just declare surplus and put up for bid here? Or? Well, we won't put them up for bid here. Everything we've got has gone on Purple Wave with the exception of some, some smaller items that we had that they said weren't worth. They were office folders and mm -hmm. things like that. The handling them wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, it's not. not worth the time it would take, so they'll just be discarded, so. Okay. But everything else we've got that, uh, that we declared has been listed on Purple Wave, with the exception of the two sheriff's vehicles that are, they weren't ready to go yet. Uh, the guys didn't have equipment out of them, but they'll be on the next government auction, so. And the only other thing that I had was a uh, was question whether Lynn and Vern were uh, wanting to go to that KC Regional Supper next week in Boyd. I'm going to decline on that one. Okay. And I'm going to be out of town, and so also I would miss next week's meeting. So uh, I, I'm hoping both Craig and Laverne will be here so there's a quorum. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I've got today. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll just go ahead and put this in here. Um, Doug, I didn't know if you had anything to report to us or anything you wanted to bring up. We've started on the next tax sale. So those papers are beginning to work their way through the app, the uh, title companies. As soon as that comes back, we'll move forward with the next tax sale. Okay. Thank you. We'll go to notices and communications, and we do have just a few. Um, the Kansas Association of Counties has a Leadership Academy, and one of their upcoming courses, and this is available um, to any county, city, or township employee. And this is on Budgeting Basics, April 2nd. That's a Wednesday over at Salina. And one thing helpful about that, sometimes when they have these, they have to be on a Thursday. And um, so that conflicts with, with our meeting here. But, but this one would be uh, April 2nd. And I see that if we um, register online, there's a $5 savings. So kind of check your calendars. And in the next few weeks, we can let uh, Brad know or if there's other employees of the county, we could let them know. Uh, another item we have here, and this is from KDHE. The Kansas Department of Health and Environment has sent us a letter, and we're supposed to post this public notice, and it's in regards to a proposed confined feeding facility. And um, what they've done is they've sent out a list um, of several throughout the state, um, but the one that pertains to us is is uh, well, I, thought I saw it here earlier. It, yes, at Hope, Kansas, and this is a um, uh, for a proposed confined feeding facility, and this is just one of the steps that you have to go through for that uh, facility. And so this is for Brian and Dee Dee Borson, B and D Feeders, 912 Highway 4, Hope, Kansas. And so um, this is just to let us be aware of that from the KDHE. Um, we also have a, uh, from the state of Kansas, Department of Kansas, the CDBG, which is a communi uh, community development block grant. And they're just saying what communities and cities happen to um, that were awarded, and we aren't among it, any of the listed ones this time, but most of them have to do with water or sewer treatment. Um, I don't know, this one is addressed to Laverne Myers, so maybe we should receive it. It's from the University of Kansas. Really? Yeah, the Chancellor's <laughs> Report, so. They're trying to get on my good so, side. Yeah, they must. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
putting aside the no, not getting into the, the K State KU part, but it, Wichita it, State is the only undefeated uh, no. college basketball team now. So that's that's really a great. That's a, quite a tribute to the to the universities that they've really uh, had. The last two years, it seemed like they've really improved their basketball. Now, Lynn, this really just says county commissioner. Oh, okay. I doesn't have my I put up. my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is um, just has to do with recycling and something we received for our review, and also a trade journal from Parks and Rec. Um, we also had another one, and this is just a solicitation, and I'll turn this over to Brad to take a look at, and then you can direct it as, as you see fit. Um, it's just someone soliciting business, and they're in the business of cleaning up landfills and some county projects on recycling, and they just have their rates um, of what they would charge if we're interested in that. The other item we received, and all of the uh, commissioners received this, is just our um, national newsletter uh, or newspaper from the on county news. <coughs> Other than that, I believe that's all of our uh, communications that we've received. The next item we have is an introduction consideration of a resolution, and this is the one that has to do with the Navarre Can Step program. So, Brad, do you want to? Yeah, this is uh, actually Mandy Finchin from the North Central Regional Planning Commission intended to be here today, but the snow at Boy uh, apparently stopped her, so she emailed uh, this information down to Janelle. But what this is is the application that needs uh, approval and signatures. It's the application form, and then there's also a resolution that uh, certifies that she had the legal authority to apply for this uh, applicator for this grant program. And there's also a second resolution that uh, certifies that the funding will be available after it's completed to maintain the building, and the funding in the amount of $4,200 is specified as coming from the Navarre Lions Club, so which they have agreed to do. And there's a number of places in there uh, that require signatures. So, and we would need two separate motions then you said there are two resolutions there are two resolutions there and each one of them sure would have its own resolution number so and it's just two copies of the same okay. thing so you also you also have the sheet that i think i gave each one of you that's the budget for mm -hmm. that project and uh, that's the tentative budget that they have put together of course the projected budget that's a little bit lower than what they first originally thought, I think, isn't it? I think they yeah, was... Janelle, do you have some comments on it? You can say something about this morning on the budget. They, she's working with KDHE yeah, with regards to the asbestos. With the environmental issues. Issue, so um, yes. she's waiting for bids on that. But. Yeah, so I think it is a little bit less than what they originally mm -hmm. they shot at. First so. was trying to get it approved for like 900000 Right. But maybe they did not intend on spending that much. So maybe. I'm, I'm relatively confident that like, like all estimates, they yeah, probably yeah. estimated yeah, high, hoping cool. they come in within that, that figure. So. All right. Okay, I'll go ahead and make the motion on the first one. It's resolution 022014. This is the re resolution that certifies the legal authority to apply for the 2014 um, Kansas Small Cities Community Development Block Grant. So was there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have the motion and second on that. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next one in is resolution 02-2014-A, and this is in regards to the, okay. uh, this assures that the Kansas Department of Commerce that the funds will be continually provided, and that's what Brad had mentioned. The Lions Club had come up with the forty-two hundred. So I would go ahead and make the motion we adopt that resolution. Second. We have the motion and the second to adopt resolution zero two twenty fourteen A. 
Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We do not have anything else as far as unfinished business or other business. Is there anything that's been overlooked or that we need to bring into the discussion? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. I'll second that. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, we're adjourned. <laughs>